go to see your doctor, does it ever cross your mind that they're feeling like an imposter, doubting their medical judgment, believing that other doctors are smarter than they are, and worry that they're going to be found out as a fraud? You see, many physicians walk around feeling like an imposter. And the toll that this takes on their energy, their well-being, and their ability to be empathetic with patients just like you is enormous and in fact contributes to the epidemic of physician burnout that we're finding ourselves in. Most say that physician burnout is due to the demands of the electronic health record, the push to see more patients in less time, the emphasis on the bottom line. Sadly, all of these factors are true and we have little control for all of them. But the thing that I wanna talk about today is something that we do have control over and that's the imposter syndrome. And I also want to talk about how mindfulness can help us exert that control. You may be wondering how I know that so many physicians feel like an imposter. Well, as a physician myself, as faculty at Harvard Medical School, and as an executive coach who's coached over 500 physicians, I've been the confidant to many. And putting aside the arrogant and egotistical doctors that we've all interacted with, Many of the others have confided in me that they feel like an imposter. And while there's a lot in medical journals and the popular media about physician burnout, you won't find much about physician imposterism. Really, are doctors going to speak publicly about their fear of being exposed as a fraud? Let me share a few examples. Jeremy, successful general internist came to coaching because he was struggling with the time demands of seeing his patients and keeping up with the electronic health record. Exhausted, he told me about muscle tension headaches, insomnia, reflux. Barely 40, he said he felt like he was 80, worn down and besieged by self-doubt and worry. Gail, I am not as smart as other doctors. I'm not as good as they are making the difficult diagnosis. It's only a matter of time until I'm found out. And the interesting thing is that Jeremy, in addition to his successful practice as an internist, was faculty at an elite medical school, had published in top medical journals, and was beloved by his patients. Allison, a successful cardiologist who had saved untold patient lives, Gail, there's something wrong with my brain. My brain does not work the way doctors really do. And when they find out how bad I am at all of this, they're going to fire me. And then it'll be as if I never went to medical school in the first place. David, a medical school dean. Everybody thinks I'm so smart, so accomplished, but I'm not really. I don't even know why they appointed me to be a dean. You can hear the weight that each of these physicians is carrying and the toll that this takes on their resilience to manage the external pressures and demands is really intense. But of course, it's not just physicians who can feel like imposters. Perhaps some of you can relate to what I'm talking about. Let's look more closely at what fuels the imposter syndrome. There's a cycle that I call the cycle of perceived inadequacy. The cycle starts when we are hyper-focused on what we perceive we're not doing well. I didn't sound very smart. I didn't give a good presentation. I'm not good at expressing my point of view. The cycle continues when we compare ourselves with others. But what do we focus on with them? We are hyper-focused on what we perceive they did well. That one is so smart. Fantastic presentation she gave. That one is so good at articulating their point of view. So we create this delta, this cognitive distortion that magnifies the difference between where we believe we are and where we believe others are. But I gotta tell you, for every person that we're comparing ourselves to, you can be sure that they are involved in the same cycle focusing on where they perceive they come up short. So I have two questions for you. Is this a subjective or an objective process? 
I ask this particularly because most doctors pride themselves on their objectivity. I posed this question to Jeremy, and he said, well, of course I'm objective. I'm a physician. I'm a scientist. And yet when I pushed him to consider the same question about his cycle of perceived inadequacy, he just about snorted in laughter. But the second question is really much more important. What if the imposter syndrome is simply a thought process? A thought process and not actually a reflection of reality. And this is where mindfulness comes in. Mindfulness, it's a bit of a buzzword these days. What it means is the awareness that emerges when we pay attention to what's in front of us, the reality of our experience, sometimes called the present moment. And when we do so with less judgment than most of us typically bring to ourselves and to our experiences. With mindfulness, we can become much more aware of our own thoughts. We can question the veracity of our thoughts. We can try to think, am I really an imposter or am I just fueling this cycle? And this is particularly important for physicians. We spend a minimum of seven years in postgraduate training learning about every biochemical process in the body and every rare disease, many of which we will never see in the lifetime of our careers. And yet we learn next to nothing about operating the instrument that we operate all of our waking hours our minds.